it's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. Geralt, you're fantastic at a great many things, but clearly fishing is not one of them. Have you caught anything today? What are you fishing for exactly? Is it cod? Carp? Pike? Bream? I'm just, I'm just listing fish that I know. Xander? Is that a fish? I'm not fishing. I can't sleep. Right. Good. That, that makes sense in so much that it sort of doesn't. What's going on, Geralt? Talk to me. A gin. A what? I'm looking for a gin. For a, gi- for a gin? A gi- like a genie? <laughs> the floaty fellas with the, the bad tempers and the banned magics, that kind of genie. Yes, it'll grant me wishes. <laughs> it's in this lake somewhere and I can't fucking sleep! Hey, panelers. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. Mark, this is episode 90. You realize we're 10 away from 100. Yeah, definitely. It's crazy. <laughs> this is amazing. It's crazy. <laughs> We've been doing this for almost two years. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going on. Yeah, yeah three years. So, this, this is fun. <laughs> it's, getting close. it's getting close. Go ahead. And, and I know we had some feedback from Laura for episode four. We're doing episode five of The Witcher tonight, but we've got some feedback from episode four. So, we're going to. Uh, take care of that first sure and then uh, and then we'll talk about episode four because i've got some things some comments to make about episode four that i think we kind of skipped over last week all right cool so lara was kind enough to send us a, a voicemail or voice feedback so here it is steve and mark greetings and salutations hey i have a drinking game for you guys anytime a character says destiny or the law of surprise during this series take a drink hey i have a couple of observations about the last podcast you talk about the the knight or the chancellor who brought the curse of the striga upon full test and why it cursed his sister instead of him well this is my theory curses are like wishes if you aren't specific about them they can come back to haunt you. He, we actually find out that he bought the curse off of someone. So whether it was a witch or whomever, he was instructed on how to create the curse, but he didn't know what it was going to do. So what it actually did was take away the thing that the king loved the most, which happened to be his sister, whom he was in love with, and also happened to curse their daughter, who became the Striga. So just my two cents on why the curse affected Ada rather than the king himself. Another thing is that we found out in episode three that the elves were the first mages and the first ones to use chaos to create magic. So I have a feeling that is why Yennefer has so much command of her magic and so much power is because she is part elven. As far as this episode goes, it was so full of revelations and probably one of my favorite episodes. Also, it had yes gear, so that always makes it better. I'll go by each character and just mention a couple of things about each of their storylines. Siri, we find out appears in this magical Broccolon forest, which is inhabited by dryads. If you know ancient Greek mythology, dryads were actually kind of like tree goddesses, but these ladies look more to be like Amazons, but they do have some sort of relationship with the trees because they have these ancient and magical trees that give some sort of water that reveals the truth about a person. And also in Siri's story, we find out that Dara 
learns that Ciri is the princess of Sintra and that her mother is Calanthe. And as much as Ciri loves her mother, we find out that Calanthe is not the great queen we think she is because she brought about the genocide of the elves as he talks about her soldiers raping, killing, and bashing young baby elves to death. So uh, Calante is not quite the wonderful grandmother that Siri thought that she had. As we move on to Geralt's story, we find out that we are actually jumping back in time to a time before Siri was born. And I just have to note the character of Calante is, to me, a bit of a combination between Cersei from Game of Thrones and Robert Baratheon, if you're familiar with the story, which I'm sure you guys are. I mean, even to the point where they call her the lioness and the sigil of House Lannister, which Cersei was from, is a lion. But Calanthe has that very strong, cold demeanor that Cersei had and that great ambition and sort of Uh, bitterness that she was born a woman and she has to live with these men's traditions. And she's also like Robert Baratheon in the fact that she would rather be fighting on the battlefield than sitting on a throne and going through all this ceremonial crap that she doesn't care for. Um, We also find out about uh, at this banquet about the law of supplies, which to me seemed a lot like um, in ancient Greek mythology and in the Odyssey there is something called the law of hospitality and also if you're familiar with Game of Thrones you realize that a specific character in the books and movies breaks the law of hospitality which has repercussions on the storyline and all the characters of that book as does when Calanthe breaks the law of surprise in this episode, denying destiny, the law of surprise, and the consequences that come from that. There were a couple of cool revelations in this episode, like we find out that Malsak was actually a counselor for Iced and the Skellig crew before he joined Calanthe's court, so I figured he was always a part of Calanthe's court, but actually he was with the Skelligs. Also, we get the incredible reveal of Pavetta's powers. And do you think she actually knew about her powers or suspected them? Or if they just came together right there? Because if you are watching with closed captioning on, when she's speaking to Dooney, you see that she's chanting something in Elder. Elder is the language of the elves that we find out in episode two when uh, Geralt is taken by the elves, and it is also the language used by mages when they are um, reciting their enchantments. So I wonder if she knew that or if it was just something that was sort of coming out of her as her powers were re- revealing themselves. Also, we I'm wondering what it was that Geralt did to break her trance. We see he takes a kind of a potion and he and Malsack are trying their best to break this magical enchantment that um, Pavetta is in and he takes a potion, starts to use the Professor X <laughs> mind power um, <laughs> position and she kind of looks at him. So kind of wondering what it was that he did to break that trance that she was in. So as we we see that Jennifer is still with her current post, and she's been there for 30-some years, so the pieces of the timeline puzzle start to fall into place as we see that Ciri is in our current timeline. Geralt is probably 12 to 13 years in the past, before right before Ciri was born, and Yennefer mentions that she's been at court for 30-some years, so her timeline is probably the oldest of all of them, and in this episode, which was really great watching Yennefer build time, portal after portal trying to escape from this mage assassin yeah. and his scorpion monster, just to finally escape... <laughs> through a portal and have her charge the little baby princess die 
which was very, very sad. But you start to see Yennefer's motivations here as she begins to speak to the little child on the beach, talking about how, you know, she's tried this whole time to create a legacy for herself and she has nothing to show for it. She has become what, in her words, are the glorified asswiper of the king. And she basically says, no matter <laughs> what you are, a powerful mage or a princess or a queen, you're still just a woman. And because of that, you're just a vessel for what everything, every everyone else in this world wants. So she has a bit of a bitter taste in her mouth and viewpoint of what a woman is in this world and thus I think her passion and goal to create some sort of legacy for herself begins in this episode so those are my opinions of the episode I thought this was one of one of my favorite episodes of the series as far as quotes go I really liked the quote from Geralt to Malsack when he says true words are rare birds in courts like this I just I feel like that needs to go on a mug or something. But my favorite quote came from the irascible and wonderful Yes Gear, where he says, yes, 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 you never get involved, except that you actually do all the time, which there he goes, speaking the audience's <laughs> point of view once more, telling us that despite Geralt's mission in life to just kill monsters and stay out of human affairs, there he is always getting involved in human <laughs> affairs. Great episode, guys, and I can't wait to hear what you think of it. Bye. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Lara, for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lara. Yeah, that's so a couple of things I, I jotted down as she was as we were listening to that. And I think we did talk a little bit about Prevetta's powers and I don't remember what we settled on, but I, I think I'm I'm if I hope I don't contradict myself from last week. I might. I th I think she must have known something beforehand because I think I did mention yes. this. There was too much control in in what she did. Where she, when she when she manifested her power, she it didn't affect her and Dunny. It only affected the the people that were attacking. So it seemed to me. And then of course the the mm -hmm. floating in the air, chanting the elder the elder words. You know that that shows that she she knew something at least, at least about her power yeah i yeah. think she had to know something and i mean that could have just been spontaneous but it seemed a little bit it there like i said there was just too much control oh definitely uh, yeah from from my my taste for what i thought uh and then we didn't i i do i remember now we didn't even discuss Geralt and mausak halting the attack and how they did that and i think really the reason was is i was totally confused every time i watched that episode. <laughs> yeah it was it was a I lot of action I still couldn't understand what they were, what they did that caused it to stop. You know, did they knock her out? Were they able to, you know, countermand whatever spell she was chanting? I don't know. It was it was way too confusing. It was all of a sudden, like Lara said, Geralt drinks this potion, and then we see both he and Mausak pointing their hands at Prevetta, and then all of a sudden everything stops, and Prevetta and Dunny fall to the floor. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, very good. Well, thank you very much, Laura. That was that was a great voicemail. Yeah, definitely. And thank you for the idea of the drinking game. So hopefully you <laughs> listeners are out there. Please don't get drunk on it and don't blame us. <laughs> Drink responsibly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but it, it, to add to that, I actually was talking to Laura. She sent that in, I believe, Thursday. I didn't get it. I didn't look at the email. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry, Lara. But uh, apparently when we recorded Friday, I did not look because, you know, I, I went back to work and being essential, I guess. And with that, I did not have much time to go start searching everything. I didn't realize it was there on our email. So we have it now. We played it. And thank you, Lara, for submitting that. And with that, when we were talking uh, or messaging through uh, Facebook... I actually recommended Lara to come on to nice. talk about this because honestly, I I like a woman's perspective, and Lara is very intuitive of what's going on with the show in comparison to what Steve and I look at, and she has a different outlook, and I like that idea. So we might cool. do this, yeah. uh, uh, 
you know, with three people towards the end. Sounds good. So Sounds good. she's working on that, and we hope to have her on soon. Nice. And spoiler alert, we do have a voicemail from her for this episode, for episode five. Yes, and we will yeah, we play will that at the later. end. <laughs> so, go ahead. You want to read the synopsis or you want me to? Go ahead. So, episode five, Bottled Appetites. Uh, the synopsis that IMDb gives us is, Heedless of warnings, Yennefer looks for a cure to restore what she's lost. Geralt inadvertently puts Jaskier in peril, and the search for Ciri intensifies. <laughs> very exciting. Yes. Very exciting stuff. There, there was there's a lot going on. There's a lot of humor in this episode that I liked. Uh, there's a lot of drama, especially at the very beginning. Uh, but uh, – and towards the end too, the the uh, the humor as well. But, you know, I, I enjoyed this just like I did the last episode. I think it had – because it had the right mixture of humor, drama, suspense, and – Kind of trickery, too, because we don't find something out until, like, three quarters in about what's going on. With, right, uh, yeah, Gil. and that's what – yeah, it, it's really cool because it's – it's this episode for me, I, I really liked it. I'm going to say that. It, it it changes – it didn't really change the tone, but we, we get a very different kind of perspective here. You know, we don't – there's not a lot of action fight scenes. In fact, the, the one action fight scene that we would have get, we just get it through dialogue. We don't we don't uh, get to see it. And so I, I thought that was really – it was a cool departure uh, for this episode – for the, the show to do this in, this in this episode. We don't really have a fight. There's no real direct fight that occurs like sword play or, or anything. There's, there's magics being thrown around. And there's some, you know, really big action at the very end, mm -hmm. but there was not, there wasn't that big fight scene that we've been getting kind of in, in some of these episodes or every other episode. So yeah, but sometimes was, we need that neat. drama and sometimes we need mm -hmm. that story to be enhanced. And Absolutely. this gave it and a lot of boobs and butts and <laughs> everything else of, that, yeah. <laughs> going on in it and tattoos that just appear out of nowhere. So, <laughs> like I said, we enjoyed it for a lot of different aspects out there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so we should get on to our top five. Absolutely. Don't judge me. So I think you should go first. I think I went last week. I thought it was interesting at the very beginning when we see the guy from Nilfgaard comes in and he's meeting the Doppler. He holds up a silver coin and the the Doppler gets kind of scared at him. And, and so I, I, I thought that was interesting. It's another another confirmation kind of that we get that, that silver is kind of the, you know, the silver bullet, <laughs> silver bullets, silver daggers, yeah. silver. Those the, these kind of things are the. That kills shapeshifters the, or something. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're a weakness to monsters. They're, they're, it's, it, monsters have a weakness to silver. Monsters are magic users or, or I guess magic users, monsters in general. And then when Fringilla has Mousat captured and she, they throw him on the ground there, she says something about a cell of – and I tried to catch it every time I watched it, but I couldn't catch what the material was – that she said that they could put him in a cell made out of this, whatever this stuff oh, was. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And it, it would take his powers away. So that was kind of interesting that we're, we're getting these glimpses of things that I, I don't think we – not much of this plays into later on in the series. I don't remember the season, but maybe it's going to be future things where we're going to uh, start to see more of these – the weaknesses – the used against magic users and in monsters and stuff. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, definitely. And my number five, well, it's pretty much almost like you with the Doppler. Basically, he's just an interesting character. Where'd this character come from? What was his history? How did he become to be where they are now? And how did they pretty much find him in some respect? And, you know, he, it looked to me like he was easily paid off to look like Mausek, but also coerced, <laughs> strong-armed in some respects because of the silver. Yeah, it was a weird scene there where he, when the guy's hiring him because, you know, the Doppler has a really weird way of speaking where he's speaking of himself in the third person. Yep, as you we. Know, we and they and all that because I guess he miss, must have some sort, of, some sort of piece of everybody that he's doppled. Exactly. You know, maybe still in him. And uh, But I, the thing that the thing that I... 
and I saw it every time I watched this episode, both times it, that I was cra- that made me crazy because they didn't explain it. How does he change his clothes? Because when he's <laughs> when he's changing his face into Mousak's face, his clothes change to Mousak's clothes, and I'm like, is that a part of the magic that he's doing that he's able to change his clothes as well? Maybe he's or- always naked and his flesh turns to clothes. Who knows? Yeah, it was weird because you know, well, he's naked when the guy comes into his room. Correct. You know, there. So maybe that's the, maybe it's all part of the, the the Doppler thing. Maybe he's just walking around free breezing it the whole time. I don't know. <laughs> free balling. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it just that's that was a little weird to me. Yeah, that he it is that he changed the clothes. So yeah. Okay. Uh, so my number four is uh, I loved the the little back and forth we have between Jennifer and that other mage that uh, that she goes to meet. And he he talks to her about the treatments that she's getting, and and she's like trying to pay him, and he says you haven't paid me enough, and he, she's like no, this is the amount, and he's like well I can, uh, you know I can make the I can make the the price I can name the price basically because I have I'm the only one who can give this this to you, hmm. and I'm assuming and because of what we see happen through the episode and, and the reminder from last episode that what she's trying to get back is her ability to to bear children is is what this guy is doing for but it also sounded like when later in the episode when they talk about and i think i have some of this in my notes when they talk about uh Geralt's rampage she he says something about a mage that he also beat up on or something like that and so i wonder if that was the same guy that uh, uh that he was doing um the sign she had outside the the door where she's she's doing her magics i thought was was quite cute it says correctives quite effective whatever the objective i thought that was uh, that was in, you know that whole scene uh there with with the with the guy and the and the young woman and they they want to get the the you know his ed kind of cured yeah. and the mayor comes in <laughs> and i uh, i just thought it was it was really it's a cool scene that played in later as well because um you know she apparently enthralls you know this mayor comes in and, and he's like well you've gotta i've gotta collect the tax for the kingdom and then shows her the shackles and she makes some comment about well i'm not the usual person that you like to shackle you know yeah and, exactly and then and then she lets him basically she lets him arrest him what we find out from the elf later or we find out from the elf is that the mayor is arresting her himself but then, of course, when we get to the mayor's house, we see that she has uh, enthralled him. Yep, enchanted and his, him. And, yeah, yeah, enchanted him and all these people that are that are there. And I kind of didn't really get what the whole idea was, what she was doing. Was she just doing it to take over the town? Was she just doing it to prove she could? Uh, it, it just it, – it, I it was think interesting... it was a way for her to alleviate any issues and – because she was trying to work within the village and mm-hmm. I think the mayor and everybody else was starting to starting to like suppress what she was trying to do for herself. And she was yeah. like, Oh, well forget it. I'm just going to take over the village with enchantment. Yeah. And you know, their, their will is not their own. Could be. He, Could he be. wants to have apple juice and walk around naked. <laughs> <laughs> no, the apple juice was for her. He said that he's. Oh, that's take true. Her yeah, the apple juice. <laughs> I, I just remembered the apple juice. That was it. <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Funny, funny stuff. Funny yeah, stuff. my my number four would be Jennifer's new business as well, and in the, in the village as she was residing. You know, I love that. I had a laugh that you know she's using her powers to help those that have uh, you know erectile dysfunction <laughs> in their marriage. Yeah, and the and it was pretty funny how it's like she fixed it. He's like, oh, it's working, and then yeah. the, then they come in to collect the tax, and he's. Like I, we gotta get out of here before it wears off. Yeah, and the mayor's <laughs> goon won't let him, won't let him yeah. go, and and she's trying to cover it up because you can kind of see it, <laughs> see what he's got going on there, you know. And yeah, it was it was a funny, funny scene. Yeah, it was the blue chew ass- for its time. <laughs> I'm assuming they, they they got to they got to go off and take care of their business. I'm sure they did. <laughs> So my number three is really a quick one. Unless I'm wrong, we never actually see the djinn, right? I mean, no, no. At the very end, he's pretty much like a smoke and just moves yeah, up. He's, so he's freed, but he's still around. Yeah, it's weird because we never. And when you go to IMDb, there actually is an actor 
is named as portraying the djinn. So I don't know if maybe there was a deleted scene or something. Or, or maybe that, it was a mocap or he did the voice. Uh, yeah. Or, yeah, maybe maybe the growls. It was just yeah. weird that we didn't. You would think the djinn being such a big part of this episode, we would have at least gotten to see something about it and along with that is just the scars on Geralt's arm I thought it was really clever because the, <laughs> the first time I watched it I didn't catch that on the first time the second and third time I did yeah the, the first time I watched it I actually I noticed the scratch every time yeah. Uh, the first time, but I thought I just thought it was part of the pottery had scratched him. No, I didn't think it was any had anything to do with with the wishes, and it was also a little unclear because you know all he says it to Yaskier is I want some peace, and so it's kind of like what Lara said in her previous voicemail there that unless you're very specific, the the genie can make up his his whatever he wants to do because he took. Oh, okay, you want peace? That means you want Yaskier's throat to expand and for him to die. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, know. well, the, the, it's <laughs> it's basically interpreted to whatever the djinn thinks. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And it's the same thing with the, the guard, the goon there in the cell, when they figure out that Geralt is the one with the wishes, when he says, I just wish you, I, I just want you to explode, or I can't remember. He didn't use the word wish until the end. Uh, he, exactly. You know, it was something. It was what he wanted to have happen, and uh, and so I thought that was that was pretty funny. And that was pretty interesting. And of course, at the at the end, we don't really know. We can speculate as to what his his wish was, but uh, we don't know exactly what it what it was. So to me, also to add on to that, I thought it was pretty cool when you talk about the scratches. Basically, it reminded me almost like of Jumanji, the next level, and on uh whatever oh yeah the 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 arms yeah with the tattoos and they they would disappear in this case it it would show and and increase yeah so and of course he didn't have those scratches at the end i don't think yeah i you know i think it's just gonna be added to his scars maybe if they're still there you know it'd just be three more scars he's got uh yeah but yeah well uh your number three yeah my number three would Geralt finally meets yennefer for the first time According to uh, the timeline and everything, she's probably mm-hmm. she's heard of him in some respect, but you know, look, you know, he happens upon her for look, you know, she's he's looking for a mage to help Jaskier uh, mm-hmm. because of the djinn and put him in, you know, that spell on him. And stories collide within this episode. I just love that aspect of like he's gathering these acquaintances that he has to have towards the end. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic there because she she's very calculated in the way she speaks because she says, I've never seen a witcher up close before. Mm-hmm. So that made me think, well, when have you seen one from far away that you knew was a witcher? You know, yeah. like I, I was trying to figure out what when would she have seen, you know, and, and then she knows as soon as he says his name, she knows he's the white wolf. Mm-hmm. So she's heard of him. And so, yeah, it was that was a, another one of those things where where our characters are starting to come together. Now we've binged the entire the entire thing, so we know that Siri doesn't meet Geralt until the last episode. And I'm not sure if Siri and Yennefer ever directly meet. I can't remember now. Um, but, but yeah, it is interesting that we're s- starting to see our characters kind of kind of collide and and our storylines are starting to to uh, you know come up together which is which is really uh, very cool and encouraging for the the series um, my number two is that little conversation we have between Yennefer and and Tessia that reveals a lot to us about what's uh, what's going on. Mm-hmm. Tessia kind of wants her to come back to Eratusa, and Yennefer's like, "No, I'm not coming back because I want everything, and I, you know, I want the ability to have a child restored." And she, she doesn't come out and say that, but we're assuming that's what what it's all about. But I did. It was another one of those things that was really interesting because the. Desea tells her that if she comes back, there's a way to redeem herself with the council. And, you know, we know that her losing the princess, losing the baby, and then abandoning Adair, uh, Adair or whatever the name of that the country was that she was supposed to be the mage of, has now kind of blackballed her with the magic society. And I it thought it was an interesting point when 
to say it says something about Eratusa is important to, or I think Yennefer says something about Eratusa isn't important. And then to say it comes back with no Eratusa is the most important place in the world or something like that. Yeah. You know, that this is, this is where the battle is going to be fought that she sees there's something coming. There's going to be this big battle and she wants the agent of chaos who is Yennefer back kind of in her fold and, and to try to get that redemption. So I thought that was really interesting that Desea reached out to her and Yennefer basically says, mm, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not taking your deal. I'm staying on my own. And number two would be finding out that it was Geralt with wishes, uh, with the wishes for the djinn. Y you would think it would be Jaskier since normally a witcher cannot be tricked with magic. And I, to me, you know, watching Xena and Hercules, you always saw Gabrielle or, uh, Yolas fall into some sort of weird trap like this. Oh, you're, you're, that's kind of cool. I didn't even think about that as a, as a story trope, that it's the sidekick. Exactly. The, the big power. And then Jaskier that is scene. that sidekick in oh, this case. Inter that's an interesting so, point. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. And, uh, and That is interesting. Yeah, and it just, this just kind of just threw it at, you know, it's like, nope, we're going I, the other way. <laughs> yeah, and that's really cool that you bring that up because it, it did, and I watched it, I was, I was very close to watching it this the, when I watched it for the third time to make sure I actually saw what happened and so they're wrestling with the va the vase 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 whatever it is <laughs> uh, with the vase and it comes open and Geralt is the one holding the seal hmm. when it comes open so I think that has to be the reason why he was the Jen's master because the other guy was holding the vase and because remember Yaskier is holding the vase and he, he kind of turns it over and shakes it out and it's like, well, that's kind of anticlimactic, which again is just another example of it's really cool. I love this character of Yaskier that we have him being the voice of the audience that uh, all the time. It's, yeah. it's just really, really cool. I love how, yeah, screen. she brings, yeah, Lara brought that up and I always laugh yeah. at it. Yeah. It's, it, it was really cool to, to hear that. And, and I've got, in fact, I've got a quote from him that I'm going to read later. Uh, that I, that I absolutely love. But yeah, it was, that, that is interesting thing. Like I said, I watched it really closely the second and third time that I watched it. And yeah, and definitely Geralt is the one holding the seal because he turns it over, he looks at it, and then he gives that seal to Yennefer mm -hmm. to say, you know, here the, he says the Arfo or the Afro, the, the, the vase has been smashed, but here's the seal. Mm. So, and that's when he figures out that she wants to be the vessel for the djinn, so... Okay, so that brings uh, brings us to my number one. Correct. Um, it just I started kind of talking about it a little bit. It's just the fact that that Yennefer wanted to be the vessel for the gin. She wanted to try to trap the gin in inside herself, and just all the things that went on with with her specifically, like the fact that she enthralls and enchants Geralt, and he goes on this rampage. That again, like I said, I thought it was it was really interesting. It's they don't show us that they just we just hear that from the elf who who just shows up out of the blue. Oh, I just came here to I heard about what you were doing. You're enacting her revenge for her. The guards thought I was trying to help you, but I was really trying to stop you and and all that. But I, I, and then of course the the scene with uh, Yennefer and, and Yaskier in the bed there when she's putting the tattoo on herself and he wakes up. I just. <laughs> Uh, I just laughed every time I watched that with, with Yaskier or Gideon going, did we, did we, uh, he was no, all okay, uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was very <laughs> uncomfortable. And, uh, uh, and then just the fact that, that we don't, we don't know specifically what Geralt's last wish was, was it to release the gin? Was it, uh, to, for him to sleep, uh, was it for him to have sex with Yennefer? I don't know. We, we don't we know. Just, yeah. we, we know these are three things that happened. At when he's, you know, we the the camera goes to his face and he says, "I wish," and then we just see his mouth kind of moving. And we don't know what else he says, and then the whole top of the thing explodes, and um, we, and then goes on from there. Maybe so, we get that in season two. Who knows? Might they might explain it in season two? I don't know. I don't know if they need to. I just thought it was. It's thought it was kind of cool that we we don't really know what his wish was. That it could have been any of these things. And uh, so I thought that was that was pretty cool. Or to see his mom or something. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> What's your number one? My number one would be uh, Geralt helps Yennefer because she wants to be the vessel, like you were mm -hmm. saying before. But, you know, to become pregnant, and that's her ultimate goal, just like Lara is, uh, and, you know, talking about, you know, she 
she wants everything at this point and she wants all the power but she also wants what she kind of lost when she gained this power so she wants yeah. everything right now and yeah. you know and Jaskier found them you know at the very end Jaskier finds them together <laughs> you know Geralt yeah. well, and it's, her it's funny it's actually the elf the elf is one of the first yeah he was the first them. one to see them and then <laughs> and, he comes over he goes oh <laughs> they're they're alive they're okay and Jaskier's like bollocks because he's gonna have this grand epic song that he was gonna sing for them you know yeah and, of so, his yeah. death or uh, yeah exactly <laughs> and then on top of that the elf was heartbroken you could see it in his eyes too yeah he's like oh yeah. no I loved her, and he confided that into Geralt in the the jail at that time too. Yeah, he goes, "Oh, you're not struck by yeah. magic; you're struck by feelings." <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. So we've got a few quotes here, and then some notes. Yeah, we do. I'll start first. Uh, that would be Yennefer saying, "Nobody smart plays fair." When she magically moves the mirror as Geralt tries to get a glimpse of her naked before entering the bath. <laughs> yeah, I love that. It is all that's cheating. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, for me, the first one I have is just at the beginning when we first see uh, Geralt and Yaskier together. Uh, Yaskier says he just comes upon Geralt in the forest and he's like, how long has it been? Has it been months? Has it been years? Has it been? Uh, I don't know. What is time? And I was just like, I thought that was a really cool quote because because Gaskier once again is is speaking like the audience, you know, because we're we're constantly asking those same questions. Exactly. What time are we in? <laughs> yeah. How long has it been since the last episode? Has it been months? Has it been years? Well, it's kind of it like the decades? quarantine. We don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what day is it? I don't know. Exactly. What time of the day exactly. is it? Is it okay to drink? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my second would be, uh, where are we? And that's uh, Chiridin. At the spa, where do you think we are? I thought it was funny. <laughs> I yeah. really do. I thought that was that was great when they when he wakes the sarcasm up sarcasm out of in, it. In the jail. Yeah, yeah. And my last one is is what we were talking about there with when Yaskier wakes up in the in the bed with with uh, Jen Jennifer and she's naked and and he's like definitely did not butter that biscuit. <laughs> I just. Wow. I couldn't. I, I thought, what? What is? What where is this guy? Yeah, where does this guy come up with these lines? <laughs> um, we gotta let's see. I'm looking at my notes to see what have we not talked about. Uh, let's just go back and forth. So my first note is that we find out why I mentioned it the last episode that Mausak took that scarf. It ended up being a scarf off from the queen's body. Yeah, there at the very end, and we find out here through the Doppler. Uh, that he was going to use that scarf to hang himself. Yeah. Mine would be when Yennefer rotates the first hourglass in the actual parlor when she was talking to the, I, I think it's another mage, and uh, the parlor's big hourglass turns as well. And that was really interesting to see. I was like, wait. It's... I was confused by that. But she's walking around. She's turning over hourglasses. And the other one and the big one is moving. And I was like, what does this have to do with anything? Yeah. No, that was a good scene. Yeah. The I, I thought, again, it was one of those funny kind of moments. I noticed in the last watch that when the, when the elf mage and Geralt come to the mayor's house there at the end, he's still covered in the blood from the goon when, he, when his head exploded. Yeah. You can see it all over, like, his face and stuff. Exactly, yeah. Uh, the last one I have would be the oh, the enchanted orgy that Yennefer mm -hmm. had created. It was cool to see that Geralt was immune to it. But it's pretty funny, though, that he was not immune after she makes him go on a rampage at night. And then he gets arrested. It's really yeah, weird. Well, it is, but she she kind of she kind of explained why that is because so she, it, you're right. He walks into the orgy. She says, "Oh, I, you're immune to my magics." And then later, when he smells the flower smell, which I think that's revealed in the second or the the second to the last episode that had that had something to do with his mom. This that smell and that she yes, said exactly, yeah. she said she it took her a while, but she finally figured out how to get into his brain. And that was what it just it was that he was immune at first, but the more she worked at it, the more she was finally able to enchant him because she just had to figure out what was the thing. So I think she says that uh, to him 
when he starts to, when he when she's try, when he talks about trapping the gin and she says yeah it's it's the smell what you're doing i had to dig into your mind and it was very useful for my trap and then he says oh it's very useful for a nap and then he <laughs> yeah. yeah and then the next scene is him waking up in the in the jail so yeah i think i think she just it just took her a little time to get get into his head so so he does have weaknesses. He does. He does. So <laughs> just a couple quick ones for me. I loved Grawl knocking out the goon with the money bag when the, the goon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's like, oh, money gets me in. Yeah, All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I also I like that he noticed the, the scars on Yennefer's wrists. And so he re realized that she had at some point tried to kill herself when they were talking about their upbringings and their childhood and stuff. And I think that's where she's trying to, to wiggle kind of into his mind and stuff. And then... I guess we're to assume Yennefer used her that teleportation power we saw in the second episode to get them out of yeah. the the, the the penthouse room there or the the high room because because she, it seems like she just popped out of that room and they popped into the one the the ground floor so yeah. she does use that type of teleportation again which I thought was, oh, was kind of interesting. Hmm. I was going to do a hmm count for this episode, <laughs> but I kept getting interrupted on my last watch of it, and so I lost count. But I lost count after five. I, I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try to one of these times keep track of all the hmms from uh, from Geralt. And don't use that as a drinking game, listeners. <laughs> no, please don't. Don't use. You'll the be drunk. You'll be, yeah, you won't make it. You'll be like me trying to watch in the tall grass. Um, but that's for another day. Uh, <laughs> so we have some right. feedback for episode five. We definitely do. So, Lara was kind enough to send in feedback for episode 5 before he actually recorded, which is awesome. So, I, I got it, I edited it, and here it is. Hey, this is Lara with feedback for Bottled Appetites. Steve and Mark, uh, do Geralt and Yaskir remind you guys of a certain cantankerous green troll and his adorably annoying donkey? This was such a great buddy <laughs> episode for those two, and I enjoyed this episode mainly because this is where at least two of our three key characters finally get to meet. There's a lot of humor, and I always am delighted by a really good plot twist, which on first watch, I did not see with this episode. First off, though, who is this B-rate Alan Rickman guy running some shady potions operation? <laughs> I swear when I heard that voice, it sounded just like Alan Rickman, and then I saw the guy, and I'm like, oh yeah, he's like a poor man's Alan Rickman. <laughs> Anyhow, so Jennifer has left the court of Aiden and gone rogue, set up a shop and is selling magical Viagra. <laughs> They're <Yep. laughs> so hilarious. The words that she gives to stop the magical spell, kumquat and ragamuffin. <laughs> I loved seeing Yennefer's development in this episode because she's finally had it with royalty and the Brotherhood of Mages, and she's kind of bound and determined to acquire power and a great legacy on her own. We see her trying to purchase magical treatments for her infertility from another rogue mage. And then we see her telling off to Saya, saying that she'll never go work for the Brotherhood again and proceeds to essentially enslave an entire town, bewitching the mayor and turning a bunch of unwitting citizens into her own personal sex toy puppets. <laughs> Damn, Yennefer is a baller in this episode. My oh, only yeah. question in this was, uh, why is there an elven doctor? I thought the uh, elves were kind of persona non grata amongst the humans. So that was a little confusing. Maybe it's in the books or something, but I thought it was strange that the, the doctor yeah. in town was an elf. Geralt seemed to understand when he was talking to Yennefer that the mages of Eratusa are modified when they ascend. But he couldn't be more wrong about the level of transformation Yennefer had to endure. He thought maybe mm -hmm. she had a clubbed foot or split ends or something. He could have never imagined, as none of us can now, you know, how twisted and deformed her, her appearance was in the beginning. I had a couple of favorite lines in this episode, and so many could go to Yaskir, who always has the wittiest and most hilarious lines, like, are you perhaps short to marble? Or, uh, oh, oh, they really are alive. But my favorite line of the episode goes to the lovely Yennefer and her sassy quote to Geralt of happy childhoods make for dull company. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll talk to you next week. 
By the way, awesome. I just got to say, I love hearing the birds singing in the background of Lara's voicemail. Yeah, I, I yeah. thought that's amazing. I've been on a few Zoom calls with some friends who have been able to do their calls outside, and you can hear the, the birds singing, and it's it's such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sound to hear in this day of being locked down and, and quarantined, to hear uh, someone as able to be outside with birds singing. So thank you, Lara. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and she's out there in Colorado, so... Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. It's fun. Uh, I, it's better than seeing turkey vultures where I am. <laughs> um, I did. I did want to comment one thing. I think the the whole elf uh, elf uh, lore. <laughs> no, the the elven bias uh, is is just certain places. I don't think it's. I don't think it's generally. Uh, Oh, it's I, almost like Lord of the Rings. I don't, where yeah, H I don't think it's all, is different. Yeah, I think it, I don't think it's because I think that's what they indicated in in one of the one of the places said like Nilf like like Sintra isn't isn't friendly to elves, but this other place is friendlier. So I think I, I think there's yeah. there's certain pockets around the country, and plus we have to remember, Laura, that we're dealing with so many different timelines here. We're Correct. we're not exactly sure at what point we're we sh you know because there's been at least one maybe there was at least one maybe two elf uprisings that we've heard about you know so i'm i'm not sure um like i said i, I don't think the elf the the anti elf bias is held by every everybody who's human i think it's i think it's just certain places so um i love what she said about yaskier and i didn't write anything else down <laughs> same here you know I, I just loved her her insight like i said it's needed as a different point mm -hmm. of view yeah uh, you and i like kind of focused on the same things i think sometimes yeah episode. we try to we yeah. try to get different things sometimes but but you know we are men so we are gonna gonna see <laughs> similar things probably so uh exactly so that's pretty much it for the episode itself, but uh, as far as comic book talk, or comic talk in general, uh, <laughs> this came up uh, today, and John Campy actually stated it on his show, and I loved listening to it, and I found it funny. Sony Pictures has an official name for their Spider-Man MCU universe, or uh, uh, Marvel Comics universe. It's called Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel Characters, and that's S-P-U-M-C. So you could take that as you will, but it, to me, that is the worst thing you can name something like that. Uh, so that, that came up, and that's uh, apparently official through Sony. The next bit would be uh, Disney is doing a live-action Hercules remake, and the guy who wrote the script for the movie is you know he did the the script for shang chi and he's involved so yeah so now i i guess disney's uh sourcing out everything that they have within their uh collective because you know they're working on marvel stuff as well as disney stuff i just hope it's not a musical i hope they keep it almost like uh Oh, what's the uh, Japanese movie that they're going to do? I forget the oh, name Oh, Mulan? Mulan. Yeah, they're doing yeah. live action. So Mulan's not going to be I'm musical. Not into, I'm not into the whole cartoons into live action. I mean, I I saw Lion King, and Beauty and the Beast was, was good, but, like, Lion King was literally the exact, like, almost shot for shot, line for line, except for... Oh, definitely, It was the yeah. exact same as the cartoon. Uh, Beauty and the Beast was a little bit different, so I actually liked the Beauty and the Beast live action one but uh i'm not i don't have kids and i'm not into this some of this live action i i'm stuff. curious about the hercules one because i was a fan of the hercules uh animated movie okay. by disney yeah. and i'm just curious to see what it would look like i'm curious to see who they would get mm -hmm. to play these characters live action wise yeah and i don't think they're gonna get danny devito mm -hmm. to to play the uh I, that did, half he, goat did he guy. do a voice in the in the okay. yeah 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 he played Hercules's uh, friend who hmm. was a half goat. Okay. 
But uh, we got a few podcast recommendations. Yeah, uh, we have to go back. Lost Revisited has has wa- has started up their podcast again. That's a joint podcast between Podcastica Network and the Next Level Online Network. They're doing a rewatch of the TV show Lost. They are currently in the third season. Yeah, third season, second or third season. Man, I just listened to it today, and I'm I'm blanking on. I think it's season three. That they're that they're in because season, anyway, yeah, which they're in season. I'm pretty sure it's season three uh, that they're in right now, and so they're back uh, week to week. I love hearing Kristen and Ben on on that yeah. podcast, um, and it's great to hear that they're happy and they're doing something. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's good to hear friends that are actually out there podcasting, providing entertainment. Uh, I, I know things were rough for a while, but, you know, Chris and Ben being back and he's doing more with the uh, celebrity spotlight. Yeah, he, he did. A, he did a great the he did a great interview with D.B. Sweeney just recently. That yep. was that was really, really good. So if you if you uh, like Ben, listen, to, uh, check out the spotlight podcast with Ben Beck from Next Level Online Network. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my recommendation would be the Westworld podcast on House Podcast Co. Yeah. with Jason and David. That's good. The They're finale. killing it each week, yeah, and it's really good. Week. The finale, and I still have to catch up. With work coming back into my <laughs> life, I don't have much time to watch too much stuff. I felt horrible. So. I felt horrible. They actually they actually called me out uh, because I lost track of my – okay, listen, y'all. I, I have been working <laughs> this entire time. I've been going – having my same job working and actually I've been working extra to get things done uh, where I work. And so I did not – I had not fallen trap to the whole not knowing what day it is until this week. And I lost track of the days and when they were going to record or when to send a voicemail. So I will definitely have a voicemail to them for the finale, which airs on Sunday. Hey, but you're doing good things and you're being essential. <laughs> yeah, That's what exactly. matters. Come it on. Was, it was one of those things I, I, I actually messaged them and said, hey, when are you recording? And they told me and I was like, sweet, I'll send a voicemail. And then, yeah, lost track of the day. So, Yeah, it's fine. We all do. And I'm sure a lot of you people that are working from home are dealing with your kids, homeschooling, yes. as well as getting into your work and dealing with work. And please... If you're doing a Zoom call for work, wear pants or something. <laughs> and, uh, I've been seeing a lot of that lately yeah. on the news. And, you know, just like, you know, keep it respectful. Get up in the morning, brush your teeth, take a shower, yeah. get dressed as if you're doing something. Get dressed in costume. Who cares? Have fun with it. That, you know, we only have X amount of time, hopefully, with this. But, you know, we could do so much and have fun. The next part I would give, the next podcast that I would recommend would be Strange Indeed with Freeman Jason. And I think they're doing a Penny Dreadful. No. Am I correct? No. Strange Indeed is going to be covering the movie, the Netflix movie In the Tall Grass next week. Ah. It is a joint movie, or it's a novella. It's a Stephen King novella. And yes. the, the movie is Joe Hill, which is Stephen King's son. Son, so, yeah, I, and it's on Netflix mm-hmm. too. I I watched it a long time ago. I got to rewatch it too. I watched it the other night, and I have to rewatch it because it was it's very confusing. It is very confusing. <laughs> I'm still not clear uh, on what happened. So there's a couple of YouTubers out there that actually did a a review and an insight on it, so you mm-hmm. could actually brush in if you want to get some information deep Sweet. down of what they were alluding to. So yeah. I suggest that TV TV podcast industries podcast is doing a penny dreadful city of angels ah. podcast. Uh, and that one, I did send them a voicemail. So if you pick that up this week, you'll hear my voice. I hope they got, I haven't finished listening to it yet. They should have got my voicemail in in time. So oh, Derek is really good. Derek's a great guy. I love, I love those guys, Derek, John and Chris. Yeah. So listen to TV podcast industries. So I have one YouTube recommendation this week. Uh, that would be Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Yes, I mentioned last week he does a podcast, but with the podcast, he actually records video nice. of the celebrities he has, and he brings them into his house. You could see inside his house as well. Nice. You see inside of him and his celebrities. Uh, it's pretty cool to watch. So, you know, he, he's done so many. So... There, there is so much to watch, and if you don't want to 
just listen. You could actually put it on your YouTube, on your Apple TV, or whatever you use to watch Apple TV on your TV. My only, I have a YouTube recommendation. If you have not, if you have not checked out some good news with John Krasinski, gosh, oh, yeah. you got to do it. He's been doing three. That's or, amazing. He's done three or four of them now, and since in this quarantine thing, and it's just gotten bigger and bigger each week. They're not very long. They're about 15, 20 minutes a piece. Uh, but he he has got some amazing things that he is able to make happen in this exactly. in this age of quarantine lockdown. So check out some good news with John Krasinski. Exactly. And if you're not following him on Twitter, he actually reaches out to his fans to provide help with what's what he's going to talk about on, you know, some good news. And he reaches out to his fan base to get information, which is really cool. And the last bit I would have would be, yeah, I mention it every week. Uh, Grim Life Collective, they're doing we're recording this right now, uh, May 1st. So they're doing tonight at midnight, but you won't hear this. But you could actually watch it if you want on your own and listen to their commentary at any given time. They always leave it up. But they do a midnight watch party, as it were, with select movies. And tonight they're doing The Children. And I think uh, the last time I spoke to Michael, he was doing it Saturday. So now they're doing it on Friday. But just follow them, subscribe, and see when they're doing another watch party. It's pretty cool to get everybody all together because you could be watching on one device on your TV, which would be the movie. And I did it last week, and it was pretty cool to watch House on Haunted Hill, the original with Vincent Price. And then uh, on my computer, I had Jessica and Michael talking. And everybody, you could talk to people in the chat room as well. So that's a pretty cool thing to do. Eventually, we will do this with a movie night with panels to pixels. It, it will just take time. Uh, I'm starting to work things out with this new desktop PC that I have. And that is how we were able to listen to Lyra's feedback tonight, which was awesome, together. And that way we can make comments. So submitting your feedback to us is always wonderful. We love to hear from any of our listeners. You can find us on any pod, your podcast player of choice, whatever you use. I'm not going to list them all because I don't feel like it. If you don't know what podcast player you're using to listen <laughs> us to, too bad. Figure it out. But you can submit your feedback to us through our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can send us an email at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle. The number one at gmail.com. That's how Laura got her voicemail to us. And we love hearing those voicemails. You can also call us and leave a voicemail at 845-350-2095. That's 845-350-2095. You can also find us on YouTube. Just search for panels to pixels, not panels to pixels search for panels to pixels podcast because if you search for panels to pixels you'll find somebody else but if you search for <laughs> panels to pixels podcast you'll get us yeah and where else can you hear us i am a co-host on the walking dead talk through brian malaj and kyle mcadams on talk through media with that we review the walking dead each week this show panels to pixels will stay on the next level podcast network but there will always be a link on our Facebook page for whenever there is a Walking Dead talk through episode. Unfortunately, right now they're you know with the Walking Dead, the whole virus and everything that's going on, this apocalypse we're in. Unfortunately, it's not a dead one. But we will be back as soon as the show comes back on, as well as Fear and World Beyond. And you could hear us through TalkThroughMedia.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. Just like Steve was saying, if you can't find it, go search for it. Exactly. <laughs> and you can hear me right here on Panels to Pixels. I will not be leaving this podcast, Mark. You're stuck with <laughs> you me. You better not. <laughs> You're stuck with me. Definitely tell 100. No, I'm, I'm staying. I'm staying. I want 200. Let's go 200. <laughs> but yeah, you can hear me right here, of course, on Panels of Pixels. And I submit voicemails to various other podcasts, as we've already mentioned. You can hear my voice on uh, several several podcasts that I submit voicemails to. So Yeah, and hopefully you'll get to see us soon, maybe on YouTube. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So, well. That's our show for tonight. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. 
and this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night.